hey, guess what? Posey just got better. Where do we start? Let's start from this guy, it's right here. This button makes the camera move even if you have something selected. Before you had to first deselect, then move, not anymore. Of course, if you have nothing selected, you will navigate the scene as usual. But if you hold this button, your interactions will let you navigate the scene no matter what you have selected. All right, let's go fast. There is an option to switch your preferred hand. For now, that means that these buttons will switch from one side to the other side of the screen. Now, let's get to the hot stuff. You have asked many times for this, and now we have it. A fingers posing system in Posit. Let me show you some tips to use it at its best. To open it, you need to have a hand selected and tap on this button. You know how I like to experiment and try new approaches, so this GUI is a bit special as it rotates and tries to stay aligned with the hand. And I think most of the time it reduces the ambiguity you might have when maybe the model's fingers would be pointing down but the interface would point up, or you want to resist the palm of the hand or the back of the hand, things like this. I don't know, I think it helps. So when you have the GUI open, it's a little bit like you have like a little mannequin. So if you want to select a hand part, you just tap on the relative button. But if you want to deselect the finger part, you don't tap on an empty space as you normally would, because that would deselect the hand and close the GUI. You instead tap again on the button. As usual, if you have nothing selected, you can rotate around. Or you can use the new navigation button here. You can also select multiple bones and rotate them all at once. Just remember that your rotations happen in screen space, meaning it's relative to your point of view. If you want to know more about this fundamental concept of Posit, please look at this video in the corner or I'm gonna link it in the description with the exact time where I explain this concept in details. So, they rotate in screen space as usual and they don't have limits or like they are not hinge joints like knee, the knee and the elbow, meaning you can break fingers pretty easily. This is to give the artist the full control exactly like in many animation rigs. So if you want to rotate multiple bones at once efficiently, try to align your camera and the direction of your finger drag to make them bend in the most optimal way. So you need to do less tweaks later. In any case, if you mess up, you can always tap on a pre-made hand pose, which of course you can also use as a starting point. The wrist button is a bit special as you can only have that one selected because you know, you really don't want to rotate the hand and the fingers together at the same time. So you would really quickly lose track of what the fingers are doing. So as soon as you select it, all the other phalanges will deselect. And as soon as you select a finger part, the wrist will deselect. And this is actually a great way to quickly deselect multiple things at once very quickly. Oh, by the way, this uh, deselect approach where you tap on an already selected part to deselect it is now valid also for all the other objects in Posit. I realized that um, it was needed because at some point I was using Posit and I was very zoomed in something I don't remember and I ran out of space on the screen and I could not deselect or navigate around anymore. So yeah, polishing, right? This new finger posing feature is a pro only feature, but there is more. To celebrate 1 million downloads on Android, this next set of feature is gonna be free for all and they are all about lights. All right, check this. One thing you can do now is that you can change the color of both lights. You know, when you open the light panel, the first light is automatically selected for you and the slider, your tweaks, and now the color refers to that light. Tapping the second light button makes you change the attributes of the second light. But now you can also access a third light. This is the ambient light. As the name suggests, this is a light that comes from the environment itself, a little bit like from all directions. Hence, you cannot change the direction of this light. That's why you don't see an arrow or like anything. But you can change its color, which is great if you want to create a dark or very contrasted light scenario or playing with the colors to have a very different mood. This also affects the reflection, which is particularly visible on the metal material. So say we set these two lights intensity at zero. Now we only have the ambient light contributing to the scene, right? And so if we now switch to the metal material, 
you will see how the ambient color affects the reflections on the material itself. Actually, now that we have this lighting scenario set up, let me show you another nice new feature. If we export this image right here, you will see that on the exported image, you have a new feature called ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is that darkening that happens in areas like creases and cavities that the light struggles to reach. Ambient occlusion is always on when you export an image. And if you have a decent phone, you can also enable it in real time. And this is like this ambient occlusion is something that gets often underestimated, but it's very important, especially because it is a kind of like shading that you can draw even in parts that are already in shadow. I mean, you should always consider adding it, but as you can see, it really contributes a lot in these kind of penumbra situations. Next, you probably noted that there is a new button in the main light. This button lets you switch the light type from direction light to point light. Let me quickly explain what that means in case you're not familiar with these terms. A direction light is a light that simulates the light coming from a source very far away. That's why only the direction or rotation of that light matters. Its rays are parallel and since the light is so far away, the light decay or like the fall off, it's not taken into account meaning the intensity of the light is the same across the whole scene. A typical example of what uh, directional light simulates is the sunlight. A point light, instead, is more similar to a light bulb. Its light rays are coming out from a single point and go in all directions, so its rotation doesn't really matter, but its position is everything. Another very cool aspect of this light type is that it has a decay, meaning its rays lose power as they travel away from the source. So as soon as you switch to point light in Posit, which you do with this button here, the traditional light direction arrow will disappear and you will be able to see the light position represented by this light bulb. You can move the light with two fingers drag or pinch, just like every draggable thing in Posit. And since, as we said, the rotation is irrelevant for this light, when you drag with one finger, you will rotate the camera around the last selected body part. This is a very important thing to do, like to move the camera around as you adjust the light position, because it really gives you a better understanding of where the light is precisely located. Little tip here is try to stay zoomed out when you adjust the light position to make things a little bit easier and snappier. One last note about this light. Since for this light, its position is so fundamental, you should probably always use it with the lights locked to the word and not to the camera. It is so important that if you have the lights locked to the camera and you switch to a point light, I will switch the light locking to the word automatically for you, as stated in this message here. So now we have so much freedom in the way we explore different lighting scenario. Also, I love the light decay in general. It makes things more roundy and three-dimensional, and it's also a great tool to help drive the viewer's eyes towards our selling point. I mean, lighting has a huge part in the way we tell our story, and it's great that you can play and experiment with it directly within Posit. Like, check this dude. With this lighting, it looks like he's taking a stroll over a sunny hill, but if we change the lighting to something like this, Look at this now. It looks like someone high as a kite in a cyberpunk alley, I don't know. Little bonus also for everyone, we now have a new prop, a rock. It's very simple, but also very versatile as a prop. Like in this scene, I use it to make a cave. And in this other scene, by squeezing it a lot and making it flat, I made that blood puddle. All right, guys, thank you all for watching and in particular to those of you who keep me motivated with a nice review or helping with the bug report or sharing their Posit artworks on the social. And of course, to the ones that unlock Posit Pro. Thank you, guys. Posit would have stayed at version 1.0.0 without you. See ya.